Hey there, everybody. What is up? Welcome back to the Good, the Bad, the Ugly podcast. I'm Rebecca Yusan with EXP Realty, and I'm so excited to introduce my first guest for today. Well, what am I talking about? It's my only guest for today, but you don't know that. <laughs> but anyway, so many of you know, I've been with EXP Realty for a while now, and it's completely changed my life, my daughter's life, my family's life. It's completely changed my business, and I love sharing with people other stories within EXP Realty and what it's done for other agents since they've come over. So we really have a super guest today, you guys. I've landed a big one. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yes. I don't know if you would call me the big one. <laughs> the big one. I got a big one. It's fine because that's what you are. Well, you guys, okay. this is Russ Legan with EXP Realty, and he is the regional director of growth. Okay, for who it's West and Central Whatever. U.S. Like who cares? He he's he's in charge of growth. growth. Whatever, I'm in charge yeah. of growing stuff. <laughs> he's in charge of growing stuff. So what, Russ, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me here. I I love when you do an intro like this. Uh, my brain always goes through like 800 th different things. You know, you're like. Blah, blah, blah. He does it. Like, I'm just a normal dude. I wake up and I grind and we do stuff and we make a difference. We try to change people's lives and they keep shoving me forward into these things. So I just look back. I'm like, how did I get here? I just go in and do stuff. And then here, here's where we end up. But I wanted to make sure we get this clear, right? You said the good, the bad, and the ugly. Well, at least I know why you have me here. I'm hoping it's, <laughs> I'm hoping it's not the ugly. <laughs> no, no, just sometimes real estate can be messy. <clears throat> but if we share yeah. our stories, it yeah. helps other agents maybe skip that step or, you know, step yeah. over it or we can yeah. show we've been through it. So let us help you get through it. Right. You know, it's funny because most of the time people only see the end result. Right. They're lo you're looking at the end result of something. Right. Yeah. It's the end result of, you know, 51 years living on this planet. <laughs> so, wow. All right. That's the end result of the good stuff and the bad stuff and the weird stuff. And, and it's like people see the, the Facebook version of most other people. You know, like you're not going on Facebook. Like the people go on Facebook and are like, my life sucks. Look at this. This sucks. And that sucks. And the other thing, we all block them, <laughs> unfollow them. Nobody yes. wants to see that crap, right? So I like know. we typically present the best stuff uh, and the good times and the fun times and the exciting things and the interesting things. And most people's lives aren't really that exciting. The day to day is just like you get up and you kind of do your thing. You get up and have a cup of coffee and you kind of roll through your world. It's not all fun and games and glamorous, you know. No. I travel all over the country and people are like, it's got to be amazing traveling around the country. I go from my house to an airport, to a seminar session, to a hotel, back to a seminar session, back to a hotel, back to the airport, back to my house. <laughs> okay. That doesn't sound very fun, but you always seem like you're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of fun to be had in there, but like, I don't, I don't get to go tour around town, you know? So it's like, that's not what I'm there for. I'm there to do yeah. work and, and, and I'm meeting people where they are. So I got to start doing a better thing. Like, hey guys, let's meet somewhere cool, <laughs> like a cave or oh. a, a mountain or something, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so it, 400 it, people on a mountain. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Or like the hot tub in Cabo. Like I met so many people. <laughs> Those networking events where you're just having yeah. a good time, relaxing, enjoying yeah. yourself, and you meet the most amazing people. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So. I think I think probably some of the best times are, well, you had said this this podcast is about wine and real estate, right? So like, yes. Like, I don't know if you know, it's two of my favorite things. Um, <laughs> and Smart man. so many of the most amazing moments are in real estate and around real estate and around a glass of wine. And that time when you get to actually pull the, you know, pull the, pull the curtain down a little bit and go, okay, who are we really? Where are they really? Get to know the, get to know the human. Cause the, yeah. the business person is one thing, but there's a human behind every one of them. The top, our top leaders, when you sit down and talk to them, it's like, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a normal dude, just like me. Yeah. He's got all the same stuff going on, just like me. His dog pooped on the carpet the other day. And he's like, I'm in a meeting. My dog just took a crap in my room, but just ran it over. And I'm going, 
Seriously? Like, oh, look at this. It, it made a pattern. And I'm going, like, that is one reason not to have a Roomba, you know, but that, yeah. that happens. <laughs> It happens. Yeah. Maybe our leaders have even bigger goals and dreams than we do, but yeah, they do it just the same. So yeah, well, let's cheers to that. Yeah. Hey, hey, so, okay. so, what are, so what are you drinking? Look at, do you see, do you see this? This is, this is a lesson learned. What is it? What do you mean? It's a stemless glass. Oh, did you break the stem or you bought it that way? Oh no, I, I bought it this way. And you know why I bought it this way? Why? Because I have a long history of starting with the tall ones and they end up really short. Oopsie. Okay. <laughs> How it's many glasses good. you knocked over and broke? <laughs> I usually break mine when I'm putting them away or pulling them out. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, it's funny because okay. I've got these little shorties and I've still broken a bunch of those too. <laughs> yeah, it happens. They're slippery sometimes. So okay. it's fine though. You can always buy more or go to plastic. That works too. Done that. <laughs> so, okay. So, Russ, I have some important questions for you All to right. make you seem more human and normal. Okay. Uh, Ready? Anything that can make me more human. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, tell me, when did you get your real estate license? You uh, remember? Yeah. 2000. Yes. Yeah, so, 2000, 2005. So, I had uh, so in 1999, I had resigned from uh, doing. Uh, kitchen bath remodel project management. So I did the design and project management. Okay. <clears throat> I got a whole bunch of weird stuff before that, but so I did the project management kitchen is bath design. So helped uh, design the design it, sell it, and then oversee the project, make sure it was done the way we talked about. So I know a ton about kitchens and bathrooms. And then I, I resigned from that to start my own countertop company, making countertops out of concrete in 1999. Before oh, that anybody, was a big deal. Nobody knew what that was it back then. Uh, so that was <laughs> interesting. And then yeah. I, I saw the market shifting here, uh, the, the world shifting here in, in the Detroit market where I was at the time. And uh, and I decided to, to, it was either really bunker down in the business or sell it. So I decided to sell the business. Uh, so I sold the business in 2004 going into 2005. And I said, hey, I know a ton of stuff about houses. My buddy's like, you should come and be a mortgage guy with me. And I was like, you know what? What the heck? Why not? I was in the mortgage business, <laughs> Rebecca, for all whopping six months. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Why oh, only six months? That is not the job for me. Okay. Right? Oh Lord. It's like yeah. paperwork and details and plan changes and program changes and rate changes and locks and ah, like that. <laughs> no, no, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Yeah. So I know. I, just not oh, right. Keep going. Like I'm trying to talk about myself, but why am I interrupting you? <laughs> You're fine. Oh. <laughs> this is how we do a conversation. <laughs> so, I, so I so I decided, you know, I know more about houses than most people. Uh, becoming a real estate agent seemed like it made sense. So I became a real estate agent, got my real estate license in 2005. And uh, Rebecca, you're going to love this. I okay. went into the office. I was a real estate one office back in the day. I go into the real estate office and I say to the broker guy, you know, who's like, oh, the broker. You know, it's like, this is the God of the building. I really worship the ground. This guy walks out, right? Okay. Uh, I didn't know any better. Uh, so I go, who's the, uh, who's the number one agent in this office? I want to interview the number one agent in this office. Uh, and he's like, just offer to take him to lunch. He'll talk to you. And I was like, cool. So he introduces me to the guy. I'm like, hey, Russ, I'm new here. Uh, I'd like to take you to lunch, pick your brain. And he's, and the guy looks at me, he's like, got to eat. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Went, to lunch, went to lunch in the place in the parking lot uh, across the street. And and I asked him this question, Rebecca. I said, if you were me, what would you do? Ooh, scary. Okay. I'm ready. Brand I know what he said. He said, I would get out of business. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Two thousand terrible. Garbage can world. Yeah. The place yeah. like the market was getting just destroyed, right? Yeah. So I'm like, this guy is awful negative. So I'm like, I'll get the number two guy. Well, the number two guy said the same thing. Not only that, he's like, I would not only get out of this business, I'd get out of state. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I ended up, uh, so I bumped into my wife's cousin in 2005, later in 2005 at one of the family uh, high, high school graduation parties. He, he, they, he and his wife flew up from Florida and he yes. says, he said, oh, you're a real estate guy. So we talked real estate and he's, and I was like, yeah, the real estate market here sucks. Uh, I interviewed the two guys and, and they told me to get out of business. And he's like, Ross, man, you should come down to Tampa, Florida. The market is just flying down here. And, and I quote, a complete idiot can make a hundred grand a year in Florida right now. And I looked at him and I'm like, 
Rob, I'm the biggest idiot I know. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. True story. Right? Humble. <laughs> so I, like I, so December 2nd, 2005, I closed on my house north of Tampa, and then I got to learn how to build a real estate business knowing zero people in a market getting completely destroyed. Yep. Uh, it was oh like the stupidest freaking decision ever. At the time, uh, I look back and I go, you, you know, get into rolling into 2006, everybody's like, oh, something's going wrong. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> like, Mark, something's wrong with the market. And of course, the Mark, yep. market got completely destroyed. So I got to learn how to build my business, build a real estate business, knowing zero people, no real estate knowledge, and a market getting destroyed. And the agents in the office are freaking out. Yeah. Uh, I had what we call an unfair advantage, though, Rebecca. You know what that was? You didn't know what you didn't know? Well, no, if I didn't make money, I didn't get to eat. <laughs> oh, there's that. <laughs> Talk about motivate so I starve a dog long enough and he'll eat out of a dumpster if he needs to. So uh, so I would I literally would do whatever I needed to do, had to do just I did all the things I did things that just I hated to do. I, I was not loving my life. So then I had to learn how to find a way to love my life and build a life and build a business. And then I started showing some of the people in the office what I was doing. They're like, I like this a lot better than the bang the phones crap that we've been taught. Uh, and so we had to learn a way to, to enjoy the ride. Okay. And it sucked. <laughs> it just sucked. Okay. I, I was going to ask you about that. Like, so what did you do if you weren't pounding the phones? How were you finding people to work with? Yeah. So I, I got the, uh, I got the lesson. I got the lessons that everybody else got. Um, a lot of people got, and people are still teaching this stuff. Uh, and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just simply saying I hated it. So I was a telemarketer for MCI back in the day. In <laughs> Everyone should have that job. 1992, three, four. Yeah. So I was yeah. trying to put myself through a uh, theological seminary. Don't ask. And uh, I was working for MCI and I was telemarketing. So I make 300 calls a night for five, five nights a week. So I worked 20 hours a week and I made enough income to keep myself floating. I was really good at it. So when I get into the real estate side, they're like, what you need to do is you need to bang the phones. And I'm like, ah, oh, Lord, like bang the phones. I want to take a phone and bang it into the person's face every time they say that. Bang the phones. Okay, fine. I'm going to punch you in the face with yep. it. Thanks like, for being think, honest. Yeah, I don't want to do this. Right. And so I get to the point where like in, by mid 2007, I, I was the number one agent in the office. And My you wife. sold one property? <laughs> Come on. I'm sorry. I'm just guessing. Two. <laughs> Two properties. Okay. Two. Well, I know yeah. you sold more than that. It, it, it was two. No, no, that was in 2007 in Tampa, Florida. You had two sales in an office with 60, 70 agents. You were number one, right? Oh my gosh. Right? So keep in mind. So in Jan January of 2008 in Tampa, there was 800 closings in the whole greater Tampa Association of Realtors with 13,000 agents. There was 800 closings. So, so if you had two, you were, you were in tall cotton. <laughs> like you were the stuff. I get the little award for the month, you know, and, and I tell a story. My wife's like, it didn't really go like that, Russ. But like, yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. This is what it felt like to me. Okay. So it's kind of funny how you have the same exact incident and two people remember it completely differently. Oh, and yeah. So I got this little certificate and I'm like number one in the office. And I go to my wife, I'm like, hey, honey, look, I got the top agent in the office award. And she looks at me and, and in my head, this is how it went down. She looks at me and went, you're number one. Well, what the hell is everybody else doing? Because we're starving, <laughs> right? Yeah, isn't that scary? Number one, and you're still broke as heck. Still broke as heck at that point. So it was a matter of like, okay, and and I wasn't having fun. I remember a day when I sat in my Infinity G35 four door Infinity car that I loved, uh, and I sat <laughs> in the parking lot of a, of a local movie theater, and I sat there and I cried. Yeah, you know why? Been there. Why? Uh, because it sucked so bad and I didn't know what to do to fix it. It's like okay. we're so screwed. So I bought a house for X amount of dollars, right? The house was worth, two years later, the house was worth half what I paid for it. Oh, so man. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to keep paying the bill and we'll suck it up and we'll make it out, you know? And and I, by the way, I did keep that house and I sold it for way more than I paid for it, but it only took 16 years to get there. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> it took 16 yes. years to get back to way more. Than so with that said, you know, I sat down and started going, okay, what am I doing? Where did my business come from? And I started saying, okay, pretty much every single person that I'm doing business with are people that I mountain bike with. Oh, maybe I should do more of that. Uh-huh. 
So then I started doing more of that. And then I started showing up every Tuesday at Hole in the Fence, which is at Wilderness Park, and we go ride. And there was like 60 or 70 people that met every Tuesday there. And then I got a little faster and I started riding with a faster group. And then uh, I would be riding along and somebody behind me, Gary Ewell, I, E-W-E-L-L, Google him. Gary Ewell would be like, hey, Rose, how's the market? Because the market was ah, just getting destroyed every week. So I was like, how's the market? How's the market? How's the market? How's so I started going, the more times I go out, the more people, people ask me to do how's the market. I just told this story earlier today. I said, so I come, like, th- people ask me this all the time. I should get really good at answering this question. Duh. Yeah. Duh. Like this light bulb moment pop out. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, cool. So I go back to the office and they're like, well, Rush, you got to have an elevator pitch. And then I started doing the elevator pitch, right? My 30 second elevator pitch. And I started realizing they asked me, how's the market? I do the elevator pitch and they run from me. They don't walk from you. They run from you. Oh, okay. you ever done your 30 second elevator pitch? You're like, yeah, my name's Russell. Like, my job's to get listing to help people list houses and get top dollar for their house. And help buyers get the house of their dreams or some variation thereof, right? It's goofy. <laughs> like somebody asks you a question, you run. mode, and then they run from you. They don't go like, oh, please, Russ, tell me more. Nobody ever said that. And I'm like, all right, so bang the phone sucks. Elevator pitch sucks. Like everything they're teaching me. I either hate or it doesn't work. It doesn't work well. And then they're like, well, Ross, you know, it's a numbers game. You know, it's one out of a hundred people are going to respond to that. I'm going like, uh, every time somebody asks me a question, I alienate them. And then I never get the opportunity to go again because now they're going to avoid me. So I started figuring, you know what? I do a market update to get myself up to speed. So I started saying, hey, uh, Gary, I do a market update every month. You want me to send it to you? And he says. Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh-huh. That's easy. I built a list of 543 people that had asked me that same stupid question. And I gave them the same stupid answer, which is, hey, I do a market update every month that tells you what's going on in the market. You want me to send it to you? They're like, yeah. I'm like, uh, give me your info. And they did. Of course they did. Everybody wants to know what's going on in the market. So I'm like, so the fat guy rolls up to the hamburger stand. He's like, hey, man, you got a hamburger? And the hamburger guy goes, here's a hamburger. And the fat guy goes, Mm, <laughs> eat that hamburger. It literally is like human nature like that. The guy asks you yeah. for a hamburger, you hand him a hamburger, and he goes, okay. Uh, he's like, somebody asked me for a hamburger, and I hand him a, a lobster, and you're like, whoa, what the heck's that? That looks like a yeah. Who eats that? Too healthy. Rebecca, who's a, how hungry was the first guy that ate a lobster? <laughs> uh, probably not very hungry. <laughs> no, he, he was hungry after he ate that, go, hmm, I'm going to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> I look at it now and I'm like, I know it's edible and I still don't want to eat it. It's just creepy as hell looking. Right? Not a lobster guy. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I don't need anything that comes out of the water. I won't even need a fish. I wouldn't even need a cow that swam a lot. So like a, a, a swimming cow, I'm out. <laughs> I've never heard of a swimming cow, but okay. You don't have to worry about that. There you go. I'm just keeping my eye open just in case. Okay. I'll let you know if I come up with it. So, okay. So this has been eye opening, Russ, because I, I started in 2012 and the market, I don't know, it might've been better than what you went through, but it's still, I was in Michigan. You couldn't even give it away. Everything was a foreclosure or short sale. So when I hear people now say, oh, the market's so bad, I'm like, dude, you guys (laughs) go home. This is still, people have jobs, people have money. There's so much movement happening. I'm like, just go home if you think the market is bad right now. Yeah. Not. So, so here's, so here's, here's the difference and here's the shift, right? So number one, get really clear on what you like to do. Find a way to build your business doing stuff you like to do. Find things so, like when I talk about, I, I was just doing this earlier. So my three recipes is build a real estate market update, build a contractor list because guess what? We're dealing with houses and houses break all the time. So shouldn't you have a list of people that can help fix that? And by the way, those people live in houses, right? And then I sort of start doing social. It's like, start going out and doing things that you love and meeting people doing things that you love. And you hold your little flag up. It's like, hey, I'm a dog guy. And all the dog people are like, hey, so am I. And they and, and the dog people always say, so am I. <laughs> they tilt their head like a dog. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. Right. And then you find your tribe and you build your tribe doing the things you love. But then you're having these interactions. That's why I was like, I'm having these interactions. And, and oh, how do I convert that? I offer them a market update. They say, yeah. Now I send it to them on a regular basis. And by the way, I do a bunch of things on dog parks. I'm like, hey, I got a dog. I've got two greyhounds, by the way. Whoa. And, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> We raise them on the side for a little side money. 
You know, it's like there's not a Pomeranian I won't take on. It's straight out of my money. <laughs> I'm kidding. Whatever it takes. We're out there yeah. stealing money from Yorkies. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yorkie <laughs> racing. <laughs> it could be a thing. I don't know. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> They're slow. It's like, what do you do? You put them in a handbag and run with them? <laughs> That's is that pretty I, much, I, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, but it's it's like figure out what you love and do that, and then learn how to connect and learn how to convert while you're doing that. So in every market going up or down, there's opportunities and you just got to find them, right? Yep. So by, so by 2008, the owners of the company are like, hey, you got like five or six people. You're showing how to make money doing real estate, doing your stuff. Would you be willing to work with one of our offices? So I got an office. 20, oh. I, got, I inherited 28 agents of which 11 of them had made more than $1 middle of the way through the year. So more than half of them had $0. And I'm like, all right. So I took that office from losing a bunch of money to making money. And then uh, after a couple of years of doing that, I was running their flagship office for their uh, for the company in Tampa uh, on Dale Mabry Row. We had 70 agents, 11 per person productivity, 770 closings for 70 people. That's a lot for a traditional real estate office. And wow. I'm sitting around looking around and I'm like, this is pretty cool, but I want more. Ooh. See, here's the thing. It's like, doesn't matter how far you go, how far you get. I got out of like weeping and gnashing of teeth to, hey, this is pretty cool to, hey, I'm making more money than I've ever made. And I still feel like I'm somebody's, I'm, I'm working for somebody else. I'm making somebody else a bunch of money. That's not a problem, but I'm looking at that. I'm going, every $300,000 they make, I make 10. Uh huh. I want to flip that. So I'm like, the heck with this. I'm like, I'm going to make the 300, give them the 10, right? So I resigned right. from that job in 2012, best paying job ever. My wife almost had a heart attack. I bet she did. I'm like, honey, I, I think I know how to fly. <laughs> oh my. Said, said as you're airborne off the cliff, right? And then mm -hmm. I like go back out. And, and what did I do? I went up back out to my sphere, connected everybody in my sphere. Said, hey, I'm back out. Boom, boom, boom. Sold 105 houses in 2013, which, <laughs> which, which was an all right year. And then That's uh, not bad. And then I got a full-time person working with me that I robbed from a bank. It's a great story. So he was managing a bank, like $45,000 a year. Uh, he made like 150 the next year with me. Uh, so I worked together on that. And then uh, I hit Sean still around. Just texting with him earlier today. We sold 143 houses in 14, 136 in 15. I bought 50% of a real estate business in 14 as a fix and flipper. We sold it for a bunch more money than I paid for it in 2015. Awesome. Running the lower half of the country from them. They said, can you do that with these 28 offices? And I was like, sure. So that's what I did. With that. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go again. And, I just do it. And, and here's the thing, Rebecca, I'm just doing the same stupid crap over and over. Mm -hmm. Just find a way to enjoy and love what you do. Find what your unique thing is. Find your people, find your tribe. And I teach other people how to find their tribe. And they're like, Ross, I love my business because I'm hanging out with a bunch of mountain bike junkies, drinking beer, scratching ourselves up in the woods. I'm like, those are your people, right? So you yeah. find your tribe. And then you can find your tribe with real estate offices. So whole real estate office, you got to be, be a flavor. And then you attract people to you. And those people attract the people to them. And then their businesses grew. And they stopped losing money. And they start making money. And then yep. they put you in charge of more stuff. And here I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it didn't just fall into your lap, though. You yeah. had to put some work in and some sweat and tears, right? It wasn't just handed to you on a platter. No, no. And it was, it was, here's a, here's a difference, Rebecca. When you sit down, you, you, you have to take the time to sit. You have sit. to take the time to sit down and enjoy a glass of wine. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right? And instead of just sitting there enjoying the glass of wine, Sit down, enjoy the glass of wine, and ask yourself a couple questions. What do I love doing? What am I good at? What do I not like to do? A lot of people are like, well, Ross, I spent, I gotta spend a bunch of time minimizing my weaknesses. No, you don't. No, screw the weaknesses. Let somebody else do the things you're weak at. You do the things you're great at, and you will go way faster, way further. Right? You will go way faster, way further. So it's a matter of sitting down and being honest with yourself. So um, there's a there was a study done uh, with people that were saying, what is it? Why, what are the, what constitutes the people that are operating in the zone of genius, which is above the zone of excellence. Zone of excellence is pretty good, right? Yeah. Zone of greatness, zone of excellence, zone of genius, right? And they're saying they are really good at self-assessment, right? Yeah. You know what you are. 
Mm -hmm. and they're, they're really good at uh, leveraging their, their assets and leveraging the things they're good at. So sit down and go, okay, so what am I good at? Be honest, right? And then yeah. leverage into that. <laughs> it's like, I'm not good with computers, okay? So it's not my thing. You Weird. Swear to God, right? So if you say to me, uh, Russ, I want to give you one of the most frustrating, like make a list of the most frustrating things you deal with as a business person. And I would say anything that has to do with a computer technology, just baffling, right? But you, you put me in a wood shop, I can and make can whittle a computer. Magic. I can I can make magic in a wood shop, right? <laughs> Woodworking tools, making things out of wood, whatever. I built I built like sixty electric bass guitars. I built my first actually my first acoustic guitar sitting right next to me here. I built then when COVID hit, I built like four or five instruments with cigar box bodies because I couldn't get to the lumber yard and I had some parts and pieces. And I'm like, well, what do, what do I build? So I'm like, you know what? I've got this big, tall cigar box. I should make an upright bass. I should make an upright bass guitar. So this sits in the corner. <laughs> Super cool. Then you're like, well, this thing needs a foot, right? Well, it's got to stand up. It stands up on something, right? So this, this has a cigar box body. Okay. Oh my gosh. 100 count cigar box. All those pieces are handcrafted, right? And then you're like, it's got to stand on a foot. So, like, I got a great idea. Let's make a foot. Oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. So, if real estate doesn't work out for you, there, I, that's what your next career will be carving T Rex chicken feet. Yeah, that'll, that'll be my thing. So, yeah, but it's something I do on the side. A lot of people are like, Russ, you should build. You should build instruments from for a business, and I'm like, no, 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 because for me, if I do it because it's fun and I do it, then there's no financial pressure. I mean, make my money doing the real estate stuff, and I do that for fun, and that's what I unplug. And a lot of people are like, well, how do you live an amazing life? Well, have a hobby <laughs> or six. I forge knives for fun, also, right? So, um, you know, it's like I've got these things floating around, and I surround myself with things that I love, uh, mm -hmm. and I do things outside of business. I, well, Russ, you don't understand. I have I've got children. Do fun stuff with your children. Like, why live a crappy life? Show your kids how to live a great life. Ladies, Rebecca, I say this, I've said this to the ladies in every office I've ever managed. I'm like, your job as a woman is to live an amazing life and show your boys and show your girls what it's like to be a strong, powerful woman that actually has an opinion, has a say, and lives an amazing life. You are not a doormat. You're not the housekeeper. You're not the food dispensary. You are a freaking strong woman. Go out there and act like it. The have queen. a life, have a hobby, do some cool shit and live a good life. And your, your sons and your daughters are going to be like, I want to marry an amazing woman like my mom. I want to be around amazing women like my mom. Like, yep. There's this, all this movements of blah, 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 blah. It's like, you know what? Move yourself first. Right? That is what you love and find nice. something you love. Try a couple things. Try it twice. First time, like, First time I tried red wine, I was like, who the hell would ever drink this? It's disgusting. And then I realized it was given to me by a Swedish guy and they like their red wine warm. And I'm like, whoa, you got to chill it down a little bit, right? Okay. Uh -huh. but you find, find what you love. Experiment. Try it out a couple of times. And you sit back and you go, you know what? That was pretty cool. I like that. Let's do that again. And then just get good at stuff. And you only get good at stuff by doing it over and over and over. Sometimes you get good at stuff by failing over and over and over, right? So my mm -hmm. mantra is uh, F3, <laughs> F3, fail, fail forward faster. You're going to get out there and mess crap up, get out there, mess it up, learn from it and move on, right? Yep. Get better at it or go find something else to mess up. Mm -hmm. My yep. first concrete countertop didn't turn out perfect. Like this is the result of screwing stuff up all over the place. I used to say to my, I used to say to my father-in-law, uh, who was who's one of my biggest supporters, and I love that man. Uh, I used to say to him, uh, by the time I'm forty, I will have screwed up everything you could screw up. And he goes, Oh no, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> so in my twenties, I was screwing up like hundred dollar and thousand dollar things. In my thirties, I was screwing up thousand dollar and ten thousand dollar things. In my forties, I was screwing up hundred thousand and million dollar things. Now I'm in a position where I can screw up multi millions really, really quickly. Ooh, that's fun. Um, you don't stop making mistakes. You just make bigger mistakes with bigger zeros attached to them. It's like mm -hmm. everybody's so afraid to make a mistake. Let's go out there, screw something up. They're like this, like at least learn from it. You don't do it intentionally. It just is what it is. Right? Try something. If it works, great. If it doesn't, yeah, move on. Failure is not the worst thing that can happen. Like you're not dead. 
That would be sad. <laughs> well, worst case scenario, I was like, worst case scenario, you die. <laughs> If it's north of that, you're actually not that bad. You got another shot at it. If you're live, you got another shot. That's true. That Absolutely. Shot. Well, yeah. my goodness, you've given us so many nuggets here and that <laughs> our time went so fast. So I'm going to give you one last okay. question. All right, here we go. So it has to be good, but this is easy. You've kind of been doing this the whole time. So I know there's going to be a lot of people watching this that are brand new, brand new real estate agents or yeah. thinking about getting into the real estate industry yeah. and they're scared or nervous, maybe hopefully yeah. not, but I know there are some that are. Sure. So I need your best advice over and above what you've already given us oh, for that yeah. new or almost brand new agent. Go. Okay. So um, this is, if I wish somebody had told me this. 20, yes, that's what we want. Okay. Who you surround yourself with matters. Who you surround. So you're, my mom always used to say, be careful who you hang out with. Uh, and not until I'm, I just turned 51 this year. And I sit back and I go, all right. Um, when I look back and I say, I'm hanging around with people that are moving the ball further, moving the ball faster. Like, I don't want to be the fastest guy in the group. I want to be at the back half of the speed because I'm going to find people that are moving faster, bigger, better, stronger, have gone through it and are doing things that I love, right? Because there's yeah. people that will teach you how to bang the phone still. They'll teach you call physicals, call expired, call withdrawn, go door knocking, sit in open houses, scratch your butt, and wait for somebody to show up type stuff. Like, there are people that will teach you that stuff. And listen, I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just simply saying – for you, if you sit there and go like, well, I don't really want to do that. There is a way, number one, but find somebody that's doing what you want to do and yeah. then just mirror and mimic them. Like, there's nothing wrong with following somebody else's lead and saying, you know what? That looks pretty cool the way you're doing it. I want to do it like that too. Will you help me? And they'll say, most of them will say, you know what? You want to hang out with me? Cool. As long as you're not slowing me down, I'll let you run with me. Yep. So, but you got to show up. You got to show up and you got to put the freaking effort in. I see people like, Russ, I want to be like you. Okay. And I, listen, my mantra is not work a bunch of hours and make a shit ton of money. My mantra is make a shit ton of money and work as little hours as you can. It's not that I don't want to work. I want to work. I want to make a bunch of money and not work a ton of hours. I want to say, I want to make more money than I need to survive. And I can save money and do it in less than 40 hours a week. And there are, listen, there are plenty of weeks where I fail at that. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most part, my goal is not to be working 60 and 70 hours a week. I want to make plenty of money and work 40 hours a week or less. So I can have a life and do more things. And by the way, in some of that 40, I'm doing stuff I love. So if you start engineering, intentionally engineer a life that you love, guess what? You're going to sit back and go, damn, my life's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's pretty, pretty darn pretty good. good. Yeah. Let, go, let go of perfect and be and fall in love with pretty damn good. Perfection is unattainable. Pretty damn good is really attainable. And it feels pretty damn good to be in pretty damn good. So, and don't stop until you get there, right? Do yeah. not stop until you get there. Put your head yeah. down hard. If you put your head down hard for two or three years, you could change your whole trajectory for the rest of your life. Two or three years doing the right stuff, change your whole trajectory for the rest of your life. Your yep. family's trajectory, your children's trajectory, but live a good life. There you go. I love it. <laughs> wow. Okay. Huh. Russ, I don't know when I'm going to see you again. Well, shareholders, I'll be there. I will be there. Right around the corner from me. I will be there. So I will be looking for you and Sylvia Dana trolling around trying to find people to hug. <laughs> I know how you guys are. <laughs> we will be there. We will be having a great time. We try to have an entourage following us, but sometimes we need to be alone so we can, you know, do our planning, but it's okay. So anyway, okay. With that, Russ, thank you so much for your time. It means so much to me and just onward and upward, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad we were able to make this happen. Thank you for your time. Thank you for trusting me to chat. <laughs> I love the way you roll. Keep doing what you do. Absolutely. All right.